In this video, we're going to talk about patterns and numbers in nature and the world. Hello everyone, my name is Kathleen Dendejones and I am your instructor for this subject, Mathematics in the Modern World. So now, let us go to our topic. So most of us have a skewed relationship with mathematics. We hate it for its drudgery or love it for its consistency. But usually, we don't have a sense of the whole picture. In reality, mathematics is an art. Remember that mathematics is an art. So it is easy to lose sight for, uh, of the elegance in the midst or technical details, especially when aesthetics, motivation, and simplicity, the core of mathematics are absent from typical math courses. So those are the, the reason why usually um, most students hate math. So we can see mathematics everywhere in this world, though sometimes we ignore its presence. So, yun nga, we can see mathematics everywhere, from the shapes of the door, to the quantities of our money. So, everything is math, or we can see mathematics everywhere nga, though sometimes we ignore its presence. So, parang, yun nga, um, pinapakita na niya, pero... Ayaw nating pansinin ka So, everybody enjoys nature. However, not everyone is interested in exploring more intensely the mathematical idea in it. So, to be able to see mathematics, we have to observe, to notice hints and clues in nature, in our daily routine, in our work, in people and communities, and in events, or many more. So there is an organized pattern to explain such phenomena, and this is through mathematics. So, sabi nga niya, we can explain um, some things through mathematics. So it explains not only regularities, but also irregularities, complexities in our world. It simplifies complex things, by organizing patterns and it shows that there is a line that connects everyone to one another and to our nature. So thus, we can say that mathematics is the art of patterns and connections embedded in nature and in our environment. By the way, what is a pattern? Or what are patterns? So what are patterns? Patterns are regular, repeated, or recurring forms of design. We can see patterns every day. From the layout of lower tiles, of course, there's a pattern. Parang um, if you're going to connect each tile, Parang may nabubong, it's either a form of wood or um, any design to the design of the scra skyscrapers. So, we don't have a skyscraper here in Abra, but let us um, think about the different buildings. So, those, um, those are skyscra uh, skyscrapers and also to the way we tie our shoelaces. Of course... First, um, we are going to knot our shoelaces, then we will make it in a form of ribbon. So, we have a pattern there and um, we do it every time that we use our shoes or rubber shoes. So, studying patterns helps students in identifying relationships and finding logical connections to form generalizations and make predictions. So, sabi niya, through patterns, 
we can help um we can help our students in identifying relationship what is the relationship of one an of one another and finding logical connections to form of course a generalization or conclusion and to be able for them to make predictions so let us have this Let's look at this pattern. What do you think will be the next phase in the sequence? So it should be easy enough to note that the pattern is made up of only two emojis. One that is sad and one that is laughing. So beginning with the sad phase, this is the sad phase, two phases then alternate. So, from sad phase, um, logically, the phase that should follow after the sad phase is the laughing phase. From sad phase to let, then laughing phase, then sad phase. Therefore, we could say that the next phase would be a laughing phase. Kasi nga, alternate lang sila. Okay? So now, let us have our example. So what is the next figure in the given pattern? So as you can see, there is no shape that is being repeated. Diba? There's only one triangle, there's only one square, and also there's only one pentagon. So by looking at the first shape, you can see that it is a triangle and it has three sides. Um, well, for the second, uh, second shape, the number of sides is 4. From 3, naging 4. So hence, we can conclude that as the pattern continues, the number of the sides also increases by 1. So the next figure in the given pattern is... What do you think? From 3, 4 to 5, of course, we will say that the next will be a polygon which has 6 sides. And what is that polygon? We have a hexagon. How about for this time? We are not going to take a look at the shapes. Instead, we're going to take a look at the patterns of numbers. So what number comes next in 1, 3, 5, 7, 9? So looking at the given numbers, the sequence is increasing, with each term being 2 more than the previous. Gaya nito, 1 plus 2, it will be equal to 3. 3 plus 2, it will be equal to 5. 5 plus 2, it will be equal to 7. 7 plus 2, it will be equal to 9. Therefore, the next term should be 9 plus 2. And what is 9 plus 2? We have 11. Number 11. So, sorry for my penmanship. I'm just using the mouse pad of my laptop. So, let us continue. Um, we also have the some real life application of pattern. First, we have tiger stripes. So, tiger stripes are distinctive reddish to orange per and dark stripes. So, you can send the picture. We also have hyenas spots. These animals are commonly found in Africa, by the way. We also have sunflower. So looking at the sunflower up close, 
you will notice that there is a definite pattern of clockwise and counterclockwise arcs or spirals extending outward from the center of the flower. So this is another demonstration of how nature works to optimize the available space. So the arrangement allows the sunflower seeds to occupy the flower head. This part. This is the flower head. So the way that maximizes their access to light and necessary nutrients. So that's another real life application of pattern. So here we also have snail's shell. So we are also very familiar with spiral pattern. Spiral pattern to. So the most common spiral pattern can be seen whirlpools or I think in Ilocano it is alicuno if I'm not mistaken and in the shells of snails and other similar mollusks. So snails are born with their shells called protocon which start out as fragile and colorless. So eventually these original shells harden or harden. So as the snail consume calcium. So nagaharden daw yung mga shell kapag nagko-consume na ng calcium yung snail sa loob. So as the snail grows, their shells also expand proportionately. So habang lumalaki sila, lumalaki din ng lumalaki ang let's just say the radius or the diameter of their shells. It is for them to grow or um, since they are expanding. Uh, so this results in refined spina, spiral structure. So that is even more visible when the shell is sliced into half. So this figure, this figure, this one. Oh, I'm sorry. This figure, the one that I've given you. Is called an equiangular spiral. So, follows the rule that as the distance from the spiral center increases, or its radius nga, or the diameter maybe, the amplitudes of the angles formed by the radii to the point and tangent to the point remain constant. So, this is another example of how nature seems to follow a certain that of rules governed by the mathematics. So another example to. We also have flower petals. Flowers with five petals are said to be the most common. So this include buttercup. So we have here the buttercup. The columbine and hibiscus. We have here the hibiscus. Or it is commonly named as gumemela here in our place. So among these flowers with eight petals are clematis and delphinium. While ragwort and marigold, we have here the marigold. With 13. 13 petals. So these numbers are all Fibonacci numbers which we will discuss on our next lesson. We also have another real-life application, which is world population. So as of 2017, it is estimated that the world population is 7.6 billion. So, world leaders, sociologists, and anthropologists are interested in studying population, including its growth. So, mathematics can be used to model population growth. So, let us recall the formula for population growth, which is A is equal to PE raised to RT. So, this formula is also called um, exponential growth or exponential decay. Wherein, 
our a is the size of the population after it grows or after the years and the rate have been applied p is the initial number of people or the number of the people from the start r is the rate of growth we have here the r and t is the time remember that the time that we are pertaining here is the hours or the years not the time that mm, just like 2000 hindi ganon the time na um, inilokano dj oras nga napalabas and we have also our e which is the Euler's constant remember that this is um, can be read as Euler Euler's constant with an approximate value of 2.718. If you're going to check your calculators, you can see an E for those who have advanced calculator. But for those who don't have, if you're going to solve for the world population, you can use 2.718. So let us have an example. The, um, the exponential growth model A is equal to 30,000 E raised to 0 0.02 T describes the population of a city in the Philippines T years after 1995. So, um, we have two questions here. The first one is, what was the population of the city in 1995? And letter B. What will be the population in 2017? So first, let us answer the first question. So, um, it, uh, ang tinatanong is, what is the population in 1995? So since our exponential growth model describes the population 10 years after Remember the word after 1995. So parang magsisimula lang natin, uh, magsisimula lang tayo mag uh, mag count ng years after 1995. So pag 1996 na, one year tina palabas di jayen. So we consider 1995 as t is equal to zero since awan palang mati na palabas na tawon. And then solve for a which is our population size. So, since the formula is given, yun na ang gagamitin natin. So, A is equal to 30,000 E raised to 0.02 T. Next, we are going to substitute the value of our T. So, A is equal to 30,000 E raised to 0.02 times 0. Nandito yung T natin. So, we substituted T as 0. And as we all know, 0 times 0 0.02 will be equal to 0. Any number multiplied to 0 is equal to 0. So now, we will have A is equal to 30,000 E raised to 0. Then next, let us find the value of E raised to 0. Since as we all know, any variable or any value raised to 0 is equal to 1, therefore we can say that um, A is equal to 30,000 times 1. And 30,000 times 1 is equal to 30,000. Therefore, the city population in 1995 was 30,000. Next, let us answer the question on letter B. So, what is the population in 2017? So, we need to find A. For the year 2017. So, first let us find the value of our T. So, to find T, we subtract 2017 and 1995. Since the initial year is 1995 and tinagpatinggan na is 20, 2017, therefore we should subtract these two. So, we will have our value of our T as 22, which we then plug in or substitute into our exponential growth or um, the formula for our world population. So now, let us substitute 22. We will have A is equal to 30,000 
e raised to 0 0.02 times 22. So what is 0 0.02 times 22? It will be 0 0.44. And the value of e raised to 0 0.44 is equal to 1. Um, 55,271 um, hundreds but if you don't know how to read how to read decimals you can just say it as 1.55271 then this will be multiplied to 30,000 so the answer will be 46,581.5 but since there is no, um, hindi naman tayo nagbibilang ng decimal or wala naman taong siguro na ang value is decimal, therefore, we will get the whole number. So we have our population as A is equal to 46,581. So therefore, the city population in 2017 was 46,581. And 81. So these are some applications of pattern. So that's all for today. Thank you and always remember prevention is better than cure. See you again on my next video.